Uh, but the bed's not been stepped in. Have you searched the house? Oh, from cellar to garret. The girl's right. There's no trace of him. He's gone. Difficult to see how a man could have left. I mean, the windows and doors are all fastened. In the middle of the night, needs all his possessions behind. Money, watch. Well, I've given the girl something to calm her down, and uh, I've taken the liberty of sending for a local nurse. She's, um, she's in a most unusual nervous state, and should on no account be left alone for a while. This is the girl who was engaged to... Uh, Rachel Howells, yes, yes. A girl with a fiery Welsh temper. Oh, what's... Well, but, gentlemen, look, I have no intention that this small domestic incident should ruin your weekend. I, I propose we continue our plans for a shoot. And, and we'll return, hopefully, to some, some simple explanation. Holmes. Holmes, I, 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 I was telling Watson something happened last night which may throw some light on this matter. Well, this, is, this is very embarrassing, but I, I find I need your advice. I couldn't sleep after foolishly taking that cup of café noir after dinner. And about two o'clock, I gave up the struggle. I came downstairs to fetch a novel I'm reading, which I'd left in the library. Well, you can imagine my surprise when I saw a glimmer of light coming from the open door. I remembered I'd extinguished the lamp and closed the door when we retired. Naturally, my first thought was of burglars. This is how you repay my trust. Prying into my family documents. You will leave my service tomorrow. Mr. Musgrave, sir, I can't bear disgrace. I've always been proud above my station in life, and disgrace would kill me. My blood will be on your head, sir. It will indeed, if you drive me to despair. What? If you cannot keep me after this, and for God's sake, let me give you notice and leave in a month, as of my own free will. A, mo a month is too long. I could stand that, Mr. Musgrave, but not to be cast out before all the folk I know so well. You don't deserve consideration, Brunton. Your, your conduct has been infamous. I, however, I've, I've no wish to bring public disgrace upon you. You take yourself away in a week and you give whatever reason you like. A week, sir? Only a week? A fortnight. Say at least a fortnight. No, a week. And you may consider yourself to have been very leniently dealt with. But what is strange is that he seemed most anxious to stay. Well, it's quite plain to me what happened. 
He went back to his room, thought it over, decided to stage his disappearance there and then, cleverly. Possibly with the help of his new woman friend. Uh, Janet. Oh, no, 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 she lives with her father on the other side of the lake. And besides, I doubt if she'd have the wit to help him. This piece of paper, which Brunton thought worth his while to consult, even at the risk of losing his job. Well, it's nothing. It's nothing of any importance at all. Nevertheless. It's simply a copy of the singular old observance called the Musgrave Ritual. A ceremony peculiar to our family, which each Musgrave has to go through on his coming of age. It's a strange catechism. Undated, but written in the style of the middle of the 17th century. Would you and Watson be good enough to read it out to me? Oh, Doctor, I, I know it by heart. Whose was it? His who is gone. Who shall have it? He who will come. Where was the sun? Over the oak. Where was the shadow? Under the elm. How was it stepped? West, eight by eight. South, seven by seven. West, six by six. South, five by five. And two by two. And so, under. What shall we give for it? All that is ours. Why should we give it? For the sake of the trust. It's a treasure hunt. Oh, no. No, I, I remember as children we often tried to solve it. It, it leads nowhere. Could Brandon have seen this before last night? It's possible. We took no pains to hide it. But what could he want with it? Obviously, he was refreshing his memory. You say that he had some map or chart which he thrust back into his pocket the moment you appeared. That's what it looked like. Yes, we must re-examine this ritual. The measurements obviously refer to some exact spot to which the rest of the document alludes. We are given two guides. Yes, um, an elm and an oak. And gentlemen, there is a patriarch among oaks. Certainly the oldest oak on the estate. This tree must have been here at the time of the Norman conquests. In all probability, but I tell you, it can't be the oak referred to, Holmes. Generations of Musgraves have attempted to solve it. They've dug up half this field. You are right, Musgrave. This is not the oak referred to in the ritual. Are there any other large oaks in the immediate vicinity? Not within a mile of the house. Where was the sun? Over the oak. We can make nothing of it today, old man. The weather's turned.
It's eight foot deep here. Yeah? Poor demented girl. Well, we must live in hope, old man. There's been no body found yet. Nothing so far, sir. We just about covered all of it. Advance something! What does it contain? Nothing of value. Could have been thrown in by anyone at any time. No, recently, or the water would have rotted the bag. The maid, last night. Well, it would explain her journey to the mere, but then... Where did she go? There's nothing here, Hope. It's just a mass of rusted and discoloured metal and some pebbles. And where is Brunt? Oh, Rachel. Why should anybody bother to throw this into the lake? I am convinced that there are not three mysteries here, but only one. And the solution of one may prove the solutions of the others. Evidently, Brunton saw something in this which escaped your forebears, Musgrave, from which he expected some personal advantage. If I can read it of right, I hold in my hand the clue to the truth concerning both the butler Brunton and the maid Howells. Where was the sun over the oak? Where was the shadow under the elm? So this is where it grew? Yes. I suppose it's impossible to tell me how high it was. Oh, I can give you that at once. It was 64 feet. <laughs> it's my old tutor. He used to give me lessons in trigonometry. When I was a lad, I used to know the height of every tree and building on this estate. I am grateful to your tutor. Tell me, did Brunton ever ask you such a question? Here, on this lawn? Now that you call it to my mind. Brunton? What, what are you doing here? Enjoying the evening, sir. This is my private law. You'll pardon me for asking, sir. The elm that once stood here, that was struck by lightning. You wouldn't remember the height of it, would you, sir? Well, why should you want to know that? Well, I'm arguing with Mr. Tregalis about it. I say it was 50 feet, he puts it higher. We have a small wager on it. Oh, well, you've lost your wager, Brunton. It was 64 feet. Ah, was it? I shall, uh... Just have to be a good sport and pay up then. Thank you, sir. <laughs> 